This week on Boring Gear Reviews, we've got the long sword from Electronic Audio Experiments. <laughs> So it's been a minute since I've done anything from Electronic Audio Experiments. If you want, you can actually go back and check out the very first video I did on the Model FET. So the Long Sword is an op amp drive with a boost, and it is capable of going from like pretty much a clean boost all the way to super, super filthy distorted stuff. And um, it can get really, really heavy and thick and gnarly, or it can be really tight and focused. The EQ on the Long Sword, I think is probably the most fascinating feature of it it really does allow you to shape this into basically any drive you want. So for controls, we have the volume, which obviously controls the volume of the pedal while it's on. There is an insane amount of volume here. So um, Unity is around 12 or one, and then it's just <laughs> so much, you can push the front end of your amp uh, with just the volume knob, and I'll show that here too. Then we have a mid-range control, and that is actually married to this shift switch. In the up or down position, it'll control the different frequency of the mid-range knob. Then we have drive, like I said, it'll go from basically a clean or you know mostly clean boost all the way to super distorted. And then we have low and high controls, which is basically like your low and high EQ, but these are the uh, James Baxendall tone stack, so it's like uh, shelving filters. We have a clipping switch, which selects different diodes. So all the way up, you're using uh, MOSFET clipping, all the way down, you're using silicon, and then in the middle, you have uh, no diodes. So it's gonna be like the most open and I hate, sorry for the term, but transparent. Um, in all those cases too, the middle will be like no compression, uh, MOSFET will be a little bit of compression, and then the silicon diodes will be like quite a bit of compression. And lastly, we have the boost knob, and this will control the amount of boost that you activate with the foot switch on the left. For today's demo, I'm using my 1989 Orville by Gibson ES335, and it has Tyson Tone Deacon pickups, which are uh, low output and unpotted. All right, so for this first clip, you'll hear my clean tone, and then I will turn on the long sword. So uh, you're gonna hear the first section with just the primary drive engaged, and I'm gonna have it set as a very kind of mild breakup. So not completely clean, uh, but definitely, not, I wouldn't call it like a, a dirty tone. I'm gonna have the volume around one o'clock. High control is gonna be around two, and then the low around noon. I'm gonna have the shift uh, switch in the down position and then the mid around like four or five o'clock and then for the clipping I'm gonna have it in the middle section so there's gonna be no clipping diode so it's gonna be the most kind of open and uncompressed uh, option we, we have here and then I'm gonna have the boost around noon so you'll hear in the first section when I click on the boost for the second section it'll sound like two completely different drives which is really one of the most uh, exciting things about this pedal besides how good it sounds you do essentially get two drives in one and after the long sword, I'm going to be running the Death by Audio's Echo Dream 2. And if you want to see my full demo and review of the Echo Dream 2, go ahead and click the link.
Okay, so in this next section, we're going to be running it very, very hot. So I'm going to have the volume around 3 o'clock. I'm going to kind of scoop the mids, so I'm rolling it back to around 10, and I'm going to have the shift in the um, upward position. I'm going to have the low EQ around 10 o'clock and the high EQ around 2 o'clock. I'm going to be using the MOSFET clipping, and I'm going to have the drive at uh, 3 o'clock and the boost around uh, 2 o'clock. One thing I love to do is push drive pedals with the volume. So um, that is going to be kind of the initial uh, push here, and then I'm you know really heavy on the gain. The first section, you'll hear just that. And then when I click on the boost, because the pedal's already going to be pretty distorted, you're not going to hear such a drastic change. But what this does will is it'll add like some sizzle or breakup in the high end. So for switching between like heavy rhythm and then or a lead tone, this would still be very effective in that because you get just more sort of clarity and like that kind of blistering feeling in the high end. And this will be paired with the CXM 1978 from Chase Bliss Audio and Maris. And I'm gonna be running this as like a fairly large but also very dark plate reverb. All right, so for this next clip, I'm going to be using the non-human audio Slow Loris first in the chain. If you want to see a full video of the Slow Loris, go ahead and click up here. I'm going to have it set not too extreme. Uh, the blend knob will be around 11 o'clock, and then the control knob will be around 7 or 8 o'clock. And that will be going into the longsword. So in this instance, I'm going to be using this as a mild gain. I'm going to have both the shift and clipping switches in the downward position, so I'm using the silicon diodes. I'll have the volume around 1, the mid at 3, the drive around 8, so it's almost off. It's just enough that there is some breakup in the signal. The low EQ around 11, the high EQ around 5, and lastly, the boost at uh, 9 o'clock. So you'll hear the boost in the second section. Uh, it's still going to be like a fairly low gain drive. It'll just be a little more uh, saturated and a little thicker.
And that will do it for the Electronic Audio Experiments Long Sword. This is the pedal I've had for a couple years, and um, it is truly, you know, every once in a while I'll do like session work or I'll, you know, fill in on friends' projects or whatever. And um, if I'm not sure exactly what I'll need, I'll always grab this. This is something I know will cover basically anything I want. Now, this doesn't do like fuzz, but as far as just distortion is concerned, this will do basically anything you're looking for. One thing to keep in mind with this pedal is that the switches and knobs interact with each other. So you can have, you know, the drive, let's say at noon, um, and how you change the clipping will drastically change how you hear that distortion. On that same token, you know, if you have the mid at noon, whether you're putting the shift control in the up or down position is really gonna change how the EQ works too. So it's super, super interactive. It's open for a lot of experimentation, but it's not so intense that you get you know, lost in it or you feel overwhelmed by the options. It's very intuitive and really quick to cycle through sounds. John and everybody at EAE make really high quality pedals. It's clear they put a ton of care and time into not only, you know, how they look and feel, but just how the circuits work. This is probably the most low noise, high gain distortion I've ever had. You got top mounted jacks and DC, and then both of these switches are uh, soft click, like relay switching. I honestly can't recommend this thing enough. If you have a chance to grab one, I totally suggest you do. And that'll do it. As always, if you enjoy this content, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. Uh, that lets YouTube know that people are interested in this content and it exposes me to more people. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll be back next week with another demo. Until then, peace.